Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today we've been asked to cover how to use the occupant load factor table in the life safety code. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna head over to NFPA 101, the life safety code, and we're using the 2021 edition. We're gonna scroll down to chapter seven, specifically 7.3, which is the capacity of the means of egress. And then we'll scroll down to the occupant load factor. And before we dive into the table, I wanna talk about the importance of reading the charging language. That's a fairly lengthy paragraph, so I'm not gonna sit here and read it to you because you could just as easily read it while it's on the screen. But you definitely want to make sure you take a moment to read that charging language before you jump into the table itself. And in this one in particular, I want to talk about that first part of that first sentence. So the occupant load in any building or portion thereof shall not be less than the number of persons determined. And it goes on, right? The reason I want to point out this charging language is because that very clearly states that this is setting a minimum number. So if you do your calculation and let's just say whatever you have, you come out with 100 people when you perform this calculation by selecting your occupant load factor from this table, but you know that that space is going to have 150 people, you need to use the larger number, which would be 150 people. This is setting a minimum, right? So let's reverse that case. Let's say that you prefer, perform your calculation and you get 150 people, but you're saying, I know I'm only going to have 100 people in this space. That's saying that this is a minimum, so in that case, you're gonna go ahead and still use the 150, even though you're saying you only expect to have 100, but you can never go less than what this calculation gives you. So that's the first reason, or just one example of why it's so important to read the charging language. So we're gonna go ahead and expand the table and take a look at this. The other thing I wanna point out when using tables is the importance of looking at footnotes, right? Um, so you can see here, there's footnote A, all factors are expressed in a gross area unless marked by net. So things like that are important to note. So you definitely wanna check out the footnotes portion of a table. So how do you use this table? Um, I wanna stress the importance that this is based on a use, not occupancy classification. So you're looking at how a particular space is used. So one example I like to throw out there is if you scroll down and you see this educational use, right? We have classrooms. Now, if you were thinking in terms of occupancy classification, you know that an educational occupancy is only K through 12. So as soon as you get to a university or college, you don't fit that educational occupancy classification. Instead, your business or assembly or whatever it may be, depending on how that space, um, what that space actually serves as. However, when you're setting your occupant load and you're choosing your occupant load factor, if you have a smaller scale classroom that has, let's say, desks and a spot for a teacher and looks like your traditional classroom, then that might still be the appropriate occupant load factor for that space, even though it's not in a educational occupancy. So that's what I really wanted to stress. Um, so here you'll see, let's say that was the case we had. We had a classroom. We would go ahead and use 20 net square feet per person as our occupant load factor. And you'll see this table is really broken down um, by broader categories of uses. So we'll have assembly use, we'll have business use, we'll have daycare use, um, all different kinds of uses. And then within that, you'll see subcategories. Um, so for example, in assembly, we have concentrated use without fixed seating and less concentrated use without fixed seating. Bench type seating, we have kitchens, we have library, reading rooms, swimming pools, a whole number of things. So you're gonna come here and choose the appropriate use. One other thing I wanna talk about is those two assembly uses I mentioned, the concentrated use and the less concentrated use. There's often a lot of confusion over what the difference between these two. And the way I like to think about it and explain it is to take a space that could be used in either way, right? So 
Let's say you're in a hotel and they have a big ballroom area. And let's say you're going in during the day for a lunch. And so they have tables and chairs. It's a sit down lunch. So there's tables and chairs all throughout the space. That's an example of a less concentrated use because if you think about it, the tables and chairs are taking up more space than if they weren't there, obviously. Um, and so you're going to have less people naturally in that space because you have the tables and chairs taking up more space. Now, if you think about, you walk into that same ballroom, but it's late at night and it's for, let's just say a function, right? So you get there, there's a couple, they're only serving hors d'oeuvres and drinks and that sort of thing. So there's a couple of high top tables, but for the most part, it's just an open space. So in that case, we're going to have people at a higher concentration, right? There's going to be more people because there's less things taking up the space. And so that's an example of where you would use the concentrated use. Now, in my example where we had a ballroom that could go either way, you always, always, always want to use the lower number. So in this case, you would use the concentrated use, that seven net, seven square feet net per person because that's gonna result in a higher occupant load and we obviously wanna err on the side of caution. We hope that provided some insight into how to use the occupant load factor table. For more information about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge you need to get the job done right, visit www.nfpa.org link.